If you watched me last haul, you might remember that I said I wasn't going to spend a stupid amount of money on hot toys. Okay, I lied. We both. Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Now the first book that I picked up for some it was a little bit driven by a fear of missing out but also just because it was a stupidly good price. And that is the Spider-Man 2099 Omnibus. Now I saw this on a website called Zatu Games, they had it for about £60 which was over 50% off cover price. And even though I've heard a lot of people saying they aren't enjoying this as much as they thought they would, I still thought that that was worth picking up. I'm going to judge this for myself when I do eventually come around to reading it, I am a big Peter David fan and I just love this era of comics. And yeah, I know just by saying it's being driven by a fear of missing out, it's just invited a wave of people in the comments to tell me why that's a stupid decision. But look around me, does it look like I make good financial choices? After that, I picked up another book that was over 50% off. I saw it on Amazon, which I know is always a bit of a risk, but it turned up in pretty decent shape, and that's Oblivion Song Book 3. Now, in my last haul, you might remember that I picked up Book 1 because I've always been a massive Kirkman fan, despite the fact that I really did not enjoy the second half of Outcast. But considering how much I love series like The Walking Dead and Invincible, I think he earned himself a free pass. And yeah, at the time when I picked this up, I didn't have volume 2, but sometimes you have to spy the deals and just get the books that you can. And also, I get volume 2 later on in this video. Then there are a couple of other books that I saw were in stock over at Speedy Hen and I knew that I needed to get them because they're part of my recommender collection and the first one was the Scumbag Deluxe Edition. Now, I was really surprised to find out that this isn't based on a guy that I know, but still, I'm very excited to read this one because I feel like this was one of those titles that I remember when it was announced and everybody was hyped for it and then the next thing I heard was that it was finished and it's getting a deluxe edition. It seems like the community forgot this book existed whilst it was being published but now I've heard such great things about it that I'm even more excited. As well, Rick Remender's one of those creators that I've never really been disappointed by. But you know what they say, Rick Remender books are like buses that you wait around for ages for one and then three appear at once. Not gonna lie, it's not really a popular phrase but my point is that the next book that I got alongside Scumbag was Deadly Class Volume 4. Now this is one of my most anticipated books of the year because I love volume 1, especially because the main character is called Marcus. Like, it's about time Marcus's get some representation. But I said to myself, it's worth waiting around until it's finished so that I can read it all in one go. Well, I was eagerly waiting this last book, and now that this is finally in my collection, I'm going to be reading this entire series next. And honestly, from what I've read so far, this has the potential to be my favourite recommended book of all time. But we'll see, I don't want to get my hopes up too high. And the next books that I got after that was a result of something that's really exciting for the channel. Now, for years, yeah, I've been sponsored by organic price books they've been phenomenal i'm still in love with them jp and everybody over there has always been a massive help but i know there's been a lot of you guys that are over in the eu that have been asking me what's the best place that i can recommend i've tried a few places out and been in discussion with a few of them but none of them really gave me the same vibe that they were on the level as organic price books but that was until i started speaking to Cavetto and the guys over at comics bugle and i realized that they really want to be the best place to sell comics in europe but still talking the talks one thing but they also walked the walk because the first book that they were generous enough to send me was Captain Marvel by Kelly Thompson Volume 1. Now yeah, my collection over the last few years has been massively deficient on Captain Marvel, and it just seems like this is quintessential Captain Marvel for somebody who hasn't read too much of this character. As well, this came phenomenally packaged, there is absolutely no damage to this book. They gave me a choice of both covers, and I'm just very excited to say that Comics Bugle is the official European sponsor of Mad Dog Comics. They've also got great payment options, they put in additional little free gifts in every single order, so if you are in the EU, I definitely recommend checking them out, and if you use code woof woof, you'll get 3% off all items that aren't already in a sale. Also, because Cavetto's such a generous guy, he was kind enough to send me the Spider-Verse Spider-Geddon Omnibus. I've been eyeing this one up for a while, and I've already done a review of Spider-Verse, and I had such a great time with it. It seems like I'm completely in the minority with that one, though. And next year, if I come back and do the season of events again, I'm going to be checking out Spider-Geddon. And as well, I wasn't sure if this was one of those books that I was going to have to miss out on, but thanks to Comics Bugle, that wasn't the case, and I've had such a great time with this book. On top of that, he was also kind enough to send me Black Cat by Jed McKay. This made it into my list of most anticipated omnibuses and when I saw this DM variant I knew I had to get this one. Black Cat is one of those characters that I thoroughly enjoy every time I see her but I'm not really sure how well she'll do in her own standalone series. I'm very excited to see exactly what that looks like. Hopefully there's just a ton of high stuff that's going on. Now yeah as soon as this was solicited I couldn't avoid the name Travel Foreman and I know it's been a few months since I reviewed the Immortal Iron Fist but... That art still sticks with me. And I don't know about anybody else, but in the comic community, it feels like there's always this subsect that gets onto anybody that hasn't read every single book before they buy it. What I'd say to that is, people are going to do what they want to do with their money, and if they aren't spending your money, 
stay out of it. And at least I know those people will have nothing to complain about in this next book because I've already read this run, I thoroughly love it because it's a superior Spider-Man omnibus. And this has been one of my favourite reads of this year, so I really wanted to make sure that I could put this in the collection. Without going back to the whole thing, I do feel like this is the highlight of Dance Heart's run, even though I'm going to be picking up the brand new day omnibuses. And I can't wait until I come back to this series again, and I'm just glad that I've got it in the best format possible. You get a free Comics Bugle sticker as well, which looks really nice in your background. If it stands up. But I also have a bit of a rule with myself that any company that supports the channel, I make sure that I support back. And I get people asking me all the time about damage sales on websites, so I wanted to check one out for myself. So I took the plunge and I said to Cavetto in advance that whatever book turns up, I'm going to show in its full effect on the channel. And I think it was about 30 euros less than the pristine edition, but I got the DM variant of Ghost Spider. I love this DM variant. It was the only choice for me, even though I do feel like the other two covers were really pretty. But this cover is just phenomenal, and if you're interested in the condition, we're going to get up close and personal. And here is the book. So we're going to do a close up and yep, I've still got the cellophane on so you can see my ring light clear as day. But from the front cover, we've only got minor damage to one of them here and it's a little bit of a bump. We've also got a little bit of damage towards the top here. The main bit of damage that I've seen is towards the spine, but it's just like a slight little crease, but the bottom corner isn't as impacted. Obviously, everybody's each to their own, and I know there's some people who will return a book if the cellophane is ripped. That's a decision that you've got to make for yourself, but I do think that these damage sales are a really good opportunity to buy a bargain. So on the back cover, there's still that bit of impact in there, but all the other corners seem to be fine. And once we take the dust jacket off, the damage is really minor, like that's the bottom corner of the spine. That is the top corner, which was probably the most most impacted part and it doesn't look as bad once the dust jacket's off and besides some minor bumps all the other corners appear to be fine as well i'm having a little flick through now as well you'll have to forgive me this is the first time i've ever done a video like this and none of the pages appear to be compromised nor does the spine and to give me honest assessment yeah it is obvious that there is some damage when you're looking for it but i think overall this is a really good value for money especially with a dm variant that i know i didn't want to miss out on but as well this season i've had books that have been delivered more damage than this one from companies like speedy hen and also amazon so i think especially if you're in the eu and you're okay with a little bit of damage but you want to save some money then the damage sales over at comics bugle is actually a really decent option but yeah this was listed as d1 and it's only really a minor bump to some of the corners the dust jacket wasn't ripped the binding isn't coming away from the ribbon so overall i think this is a really good bargain and now i'm going to pass it back over to the other version of me but then about midway through summit i wanted to pick up some books that i was worried i'd forget about and would eventually go out of print but the first book that i picked picked up was the Tom Strong Compendium. Yeah, I wish this would have been an omnibus, but at the same time, I'm just really glad that this is collected. I love Alan Moore, but I haven't really read a lot of his stuff after he left both DC and Marvel. And I think I've only read the first four issues of this book years ago. The Chris Sprouse art is really clean and not something that I'd normally associate with Alan Moore. And it just seems like his take on quintessential superheroes, so I'm really excited to see what this book's about. And honestly, for as much as I love an omnibus, these compendiums are such great value for money. Alongside that, I picked up another Alan Moore compendium, and that one is top 10. But this seems to be in a very similar vein to Tom Strong, even like how the spines have some kind of cohesion to them. But I'm really excited to see what Alan Moore does when he's got a team of superheroes that he's working with. Because yeah, Watchmen still is a great book, so if you give him more than 12 issues, I'd really like to see what he can do. And the last book that I picked up from Books Etc is one that I knew would go out of print later on down the line, and that is Superman Camelot Falls Deluxe Edition. Kurt Busiek, to me, is one of those underrated writers that's always putting out great work, but he never really Really seems to get a lot of the limelight. I haven't read anything from this book yet, but I'm still very excited to crack it open. And it seems like DC's putting out some great deluxe editions, like I'm really excited to get Batman Under the Red Hood. After that, Shadow Cat was kind enough to surprise me with a few books, the first of which I didn't even know existed, but it's Conan the Barbarian, the behind the scenes story. Now, Conan the Barbarian was one of my favourite films growing up, and probably the most influential because from the age of about seven, I was like, when I grow up, I'm gonna look like Conan the Barbarian. But instead it just turned out to be me. But this seems like it's got tons of behind the scenes info, photos, interviews that have never been seen or read before. And I'm very excited to jump into this one again and I'm just glad that she found it because like I said, I didn't even know this existed. The next book that she got me was part of a continuing quest to try and turn me into a manga guy which you should know by now, I'm definitely not. We've even got a t-shirt on maddogcomics.com that proves it. But that book turned out to be Spider-Man Fake Red. Now yeah, for weeks I saw people on Reddit sharing art from this book and I just thought it looked phenomenal. 
phenomenal. I hope the story is half as good as the art because then I know I'm going to be in for a great time. And this looks like quite a quick read so I'm probably going to sit down one weekend and just blast this out. She also got me the deluxe edition of Coda. Now Cyspiri is one of those names that I always hear people talking about but I've never really jumped into one of his titles. And I know I need to expand more beyond just Marvel and DC and this looks like a phenomenal book to do that with. And I hope it lives up to the hype. She saw the art and thought it'd be something that I enjoy. And to be fair she's never really got it wrong before so I'm going to trust her on this one. And the last book that she picked me up was part of an anniversary gift because she definitely is real. Like would I really sit here and make up both a girlfriend and an anniversary? But she got me the Savage Sword of Conan Volume 6. Because the first book that she ever got me as a gift was the Savage Sword of Conan Volume 1. But if I remember correctly this finishes out the Roy Thomas part of this run which to me feels like a nice natural stopping point. The art in this has always been phenomenal and I just love going back to these really adult orientated Conan stories. That makes it sound like it's hentai. But either way I am very glad to be adding this into the Conan section. Now for the part of the video that most people skip over along with the times when I'm just talking in general. But it's the Power Rangers figures that are entering the dog pound and first up I got Lost Galaxy Green and Lost Galaxy Pink. This completes this team which I'm very happy to be doing even if it still means that Lost Galaxy Yellow doesn't have a Quasar Saber. But because this team debuted after In Space it often gets completely overshadowed but it's such a phenomenal series. And speaking of which the other Power Rangers team that I completed this season was the Alien Rangers. Yep the box is already in the garage so just trust me I've got all five. But I love the Alien Rangers even if I would have wished that Bandai would have gone with the ninja theme but just getting the full team in one box is a great feeling because you don't have to worry that they're going to forget about it. Kind of like what they did with Time Force. But the last lot of books that I got from this season was courtesy of Organic Price Books. They've supported this channel for years now and I'm glad that they continue to do so. JP has been a pleasure to work with. I'd consider him a good friend. But this is the only time I've ever had a problem with the shipment with them because the box was so heavy they did me back in. And yeah, that's probably a result of me being a complete weakling. But at the same time, it's because there were so many books in this box. And because I asked them to ship them all together, which works out even better with the discount codes that we've got. So yeah, they are the channel's sponsor and I definitely recommend recommend checking out Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping and amazing customer services and if you use code woof woof you'll get two dollars off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together make sure you use code woof woof ship it together for five percent off your entire order. Don't worry you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like. But the first book that JP was kind enough to send me was the X-23 Omnibus. I love when I reviewed the all new Wolverine last year but still I'm very excited to read her formative years to see how they incorporate her character into the Marvel Universe. And with this being a volume one, I'm very excited to see how far they take this. And the next book was one that helped round out a set because you might remember from the beginning of this video, but I needed Oblivion Song book two. They had this for over 50% off because they had a great sale that was going on at the time. So I knew that was a sign that I needed to pick this one up and I'm very glad that I'm finishing another Robert Kirkman series. I do hope I can read this for Halloween. I don't really know if it's a horror vibe, so it might not technically be a good time. But either way, I've never really waited around too long to jump into another Kirkman series, I don't think this is going to be any exception. Speaking of Robert Kirkman, and this was also a book that I didn't think would get a reprint because there was just so much going on behind the scenes. So as soon as it was announced, I knew I needed to pick it up, but that is a Marvel Zombies Omnibus. But I love this DM variant, so I knew this was the one that I needed to pick up. And I know I've read quite a bit of the Zombies universe because when I was younger, that was always so cool to me, so I'm really glad to go back and see exactly how it holds up now. And having Robert Kirkman on the title is always a good selling point to me so there's just so many things and so many reasons for me to be excited about this book and also this is a very whammy boy but for people who've got this in the collection already do you put it in the m section for marvel zombies or do you put it in the z section for zombies another marvel reprint that i knew i couldn't miss out on because i've said it before but if there's a reprint that you know you need you need to make sure that that's your top priority which is why i knew i needed the secret warriors omnibus this year i've been reading a lot of jonathan hickman titles i read fantastic four then i read secret wars i'm currently reading his event just run and yeah now I've done it completely out of order but it's always such high caliber storytelling that I'm really excited to see how he started at Marvel. This also has that spy espionage feel to it that I always really enjoy and there's such a variety of great artists working on this that I'm just so excited to jump back into this title. Another one that I knew I couldn't miss out on was the Thunderbolts Omnibus Volume 3. Now yeah I've been picking these up as they come out and I'm so excited that we're getting the Red Omnibus and Uncaged. So this Omnibus was one that I wasn't going to miss out on. I've actually read part of this when it was coming out in 
single issues. So now we're getting into that era where I do have a bit of nostalgia for it, and it was also during the time when Bendis was on Avengers, which is just one of my favourite times during Marvel, which I know is probably blasphemous to people who don't enjoy it as much, but at the end of the day, you should just read what you want to, and I am very excited to jump back into the Thunderbolts. And the last Marvel omnibus that I picked up for summer, and one that I was equally as excited for, is Captain America by Tanaheshi Coates. I remember in preparation for me where to start Captain America, I read the first couple of issues of this, and I really enjoyed it. It had such a cinematic feel to it, and felt so much more grounded, which was probably needed after Nick Spencer, but either way, I'm very excited to see if this keeps the same momentum the later on into the series it goes. And this is actually a very thin omnibus, so I could probably read this in a few settings. And we said earlier about Rick Remender books, and I was still waiting for that third bus to come. Well, here it is, because I got Righteous Thirst for Vengeance, which honestly, I really struggled to pronounce with a bit of a lisp. And also because I'm filming this on one of the hottest days of the year. But again, with this being Rick Remender in the super oversized hardcover format, I knew there was no way that I was going to miss out on this. Although I know a little bit about Scumbag, and I've read some of Deadly Class, I know absolutely nothing about this book. It seems like a much quieter, more personal Rick Remender story, which sometimes are the ones that I enjoy more. But either way, whatever's waiting for me beyond this front cover, I am very excited for, and I'm glad that this is entering the collection. Now finally, some more DC books, because it feels like they are finally acknowledging that omnibuses are really worth printing. And the first was one that I was certain was going to be cancelled again, because it's the Batman TMNT omnibus. I spoke to JP well in advance, and I said as soon as you get these books in, can you please put one aside for me? And at the time, they were doing a special sale where you get an additional discount off Batman books, which works out even better, and I feel like DC was being a bit dodgy with this release, because this very easily could have just been an oversized hardcover. I feel like this is about the same size as Doom Patrol by Gerard Way. Either way though, after this was cancelled the first time, I thought I was never going to see this. I thought there might have been some rights issue between IDW and DC, so I did not wait around, and thanks to JP and Organic Price Books, I am so glad that this book is finally entering the dog pound. Another DC omnibus, and one of my most anticipated for this year, which is the Green Lantern Core Volume 1 by Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. Yeah, unfortunately, it is missing those couple of issues that I spoke about in my video, and there is double dipping with the Jeff Johns omnibuses, but the rest of this run is so phenomenal, and I love the story it tells despite all of those other events that were going on. Even when I was doing videos talking about my most wanted DC omnibuses, Green Lantern Core was one of those titles that was near the top, so regardless of how much it double dips, how much is missing, I was still going to make sure that this was going to enter my collection. And the last omnibus that I picked up for this season was one that I got more excited for the more often that I heard about it, probably more so than the Green Lantern Core omnibus because it's Batman by Peter J. Tomasi. Just from reading a couple of issues of this and looking at the interior art, I am so excited for this. It's weird as well because I believe this follows on from the James Tinian omnibus which was a series that I really enjoyed, but you often only hear people talk about Tom King's run, so I'm wondering if this is going to be as much of a sleeper hit for me as a James Tinian book. And if it is, then I am very excited and glad that I picked this one up because I had such a great time with Detective Comics before this. And it's strange because when this was announced, I'd completely forgotten that Tomasi had even wrote Detective Comics, but now out of this summer haul, this is probably the one that I want to read the most. Now, in my last haul, you might remember that despite the fact that comics and omnibuses are already a hobby that's difficult to keep up with and can get quite expensive, I decided to take up another hobby that's also difficult to keep up with and can still be quite expensive. That was Hot Toys, and I convinced myself that it was only ever going to be Iron Spider and Classic Suit Spider, but we all knew that I was lying to myself. And a fully blame Triple G Comics for it. So first up, for a phenomenal price of only £200, I managed to get the Iron Man Mark 85 armor. And honestly, even though I know a lot of people don't put the batteries in and don't pose them, I think this looks phenomenal when it's all lit up and he's got the gauntlet on. So yeah, for the price I saw this for, there was absolutely no way that I was missing out on it, and it's just a phenomenal looking piece of my collection. And with Hot Toys being a pretty new hobby, it means that I can be interested in pretty much any of them, so it means that there doesn't need to be any cohesion with it just yet, because the next one that I picked up was Falcon Cap. Yeah, I wasn't a massive fan of this show, but I absolutely loved his design, and honestly, seeing this one in person when he's got the shield and his wings spread out, it's just phenomenal. Which is just a bit of a shame, because at the moment, I am a bit constricted in terms of space, so this is one that I'm keeping so that hopefully in a year or two, I can display this in the way that it deserves to be. But then my brain did that thing when it started putting dots together so that it can justify buying another one, and I said to myself, why have you got an Iron Man from Endgame? 
in a Captain America that's Falcon cap, but not actually a Captain America. And then fortunately I met a great guy on Facebook who did me a great deal, so I also have an Endgame Captain America. Admittedly this one isn't as poseable, but he still just looks great with his broken shield and Mjolnir. But honestly, I don't know if I'm too excited to get an Endgame Thor because I don't think that's my favourite look for that character. But yeah, like I said, I did buy this one used and off a Facebook group, and I know that is a bit risky for some people, but I would always recommend that if you're buying something from somebody for the first time, always make sure that you go through goods and services. No matter how long you've been talking to the person, if they get offended by you not going through friends and family, that is a person you do not want to be buying from. But after that one, it meant that the Avengers side of the collection was bigger than my Spider-Man collection that started it off. And I just couldn't have that, so when I was buying the Captain America from Lee, I asked the most dangerous question you can ever ask anybody when you're buying something. Hey, what else are you selling? And then because I thought I'd never get one of these because they're quite rare to buy and he had it for a phenomenal price, I had to make sure that I picked up the Scarlet Spider. This was one of my most wanted, even before I knew what Hot Toys were really selling, but I think this was like a Toy Fair exclusive a few years ago and you don't really see a lot of these cropping up on the groups that I'm in. So there was no way that I was going to pass this up, especially for the phenomenal price that it was. And I just love the accessories that he comes with, like I've got him swinging whilst eating a donut. And I know it might be a bit damaging for the suit and the joints, but I'm really not a big fan of the museum pose. And whilst I was picking up these Spider-Man Hot Toys, they announced the new ones that they're doing for Spider-Man 2. Yep, that game is definitely going to be something that I'm buying on day one, but having a look at the Miles Morales that they were releasing, there were some updates to it that I really liked, but there was one accessory missing that I felt was a deal breaker, and that was Spider-Cat in the backpack, so I made sure that I got the original Miles Morales. I just love this suit so much more than the Into the Spider-Verse one, and I'm just glad that this doesn't come with some voice functionality because I could not stand his voice in this game. But it is such a phenomenal design, and I love the webbing that they've got on this suit and all the accessories that it comes with. And I think as well, if I'm getting a Ben Riley and a classic suit Spider-Man and an Iron Spider, then I need to make sure that I pick up Miles as well. And the last one that I picked up because I saw it for about £160 and there was no way that I was missing out on it, is Spider-Man 2099. Yeah, it does say the black suit version and it doesn't look like they ever announced that they were going to do the white version. And yeah, before you ask, I have already pre-ordered the symbiote Spider and I regret nothing. These all look phenomenal together and I can see me keeping these in my collection for years. But that's everything that I picked up for this haul and just before I end this video, I want to do a bit of housekeeping because about a week or so ago, I put a community post up saying that I'm going to be taking a bit of a hiatus. But the thing is, I'm taking a hiatus from uploading videos, but not from making them. There's been a few massive videos that I've been working on for months that just keep getting pushed further and further back. And even though I enjoy doing stuff like the season of events, I think forcing myself to put out a weekly video is actually going to be detrimental to the overall quality. And honestly, I don't know about everybody else, but it feels like YouTube's become such a negative place lately. You can do 99% of that video perfectly, but people will always nitpick about the 1%. But honestly, I want to make sure that I'm putting out videos that I really enjoy and I'm proud of, regardless of the backlash that I'm probably inevitably going to get. The majority of people in this community are still great, but sometimes it can just wear you down a little bit, and you start to question where your passion's going, and if you are being able to do the videos that you really want, or if you're just putting videos out to try and hopefully please some kind of algorithm. There are massive videos that I've got in the pipeline, and it might be the fact that they come out in two weeks, or it might even be a month or two after that. So hopefully you guys will enjoy these massive videos that I've got planned out. But I'm not giving up completely, and I'm not feeling burnt out with this hobby overall. If I only bring out one video a month, I want you guys to know that it's a video that so much time and effort has gone into. And I know there's probably going to be some backlash to me saying all this, but hopefully the majority of you will really respect that. I'm really glad to everybody that has reached out since I've done that post. You guys are the OGs. You are the ones that I really want to make videos for. Not the people that are just nitpicking and constantly dragging everything than down because in all honesty you only ever really see them on one or two videos. So yeah, don't worry, the reviews will be coming back eventually but there's just a few things that I've got to tick off my YouTube bucket list because by trying to juggle everything it means that I haven't been able to give anything with full attention. But that's been my haul for summer, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it and let me know in the comments section what are some of the books that you've picked up. But I am very sweaty at the minute and at risk of passing out so until next time, whenever that may be, just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs. We're both See you the next video.